But I'm going to try to make this very easy. I had to do it for myself, so I'll do it for y'all. If you look at breast cancer and you're diagnosed, there's an 18% chance of death in five years. Mortality just means death rate. And prostate cancer is 18%. Now, y'all hear about the big colon cancer. Let's look at colon cancer. 50% chance of death rate in five years after the diagnosis. Let's take a look at some of the problems we deal with. PAD is peripheral artery disease. That's a circulatory problem, arterial problem of the legs. There's a 64% death rate in five years if you have wounds. Ischemic ulcer is part of this, but there's other reasons for ischemia than just big arteries. It's 55%. If you have an amputation of one limb, you run a 47% and a neuropathic ulcer, those are ulcers that occur because you can't feel your legs, your feet, your arms. There's a 45% chance of death rate in five years. Couple that with about 30% of people don't even treat their wounds, and you, you've got this big area of underserved people and people not realizing how bad these wounds can turn out. Why do they have diabetes listed at top? Because it's a major risk factor of developing ischemic ulcers, neuropathic ulcers, peripheral artery disease. Now, what is specialized wound care? Specialized wound care is a, is a field of science where we use evidence-based and clinical-based <coughs> guidelines to treat wounds. In other words, we have tried A, we tried B, we tried A against B, and through evidence-based and clinical-based evidence, we have found certain things work better. Just like wounds that are debrided, somebody, nobody wants to go to a dentist every week, they don't want to go to the wound care center every week, but why do they come back every week? Because if you debride a wound on average of once a week, they heal quicker. Not twice a week, not every other week, but once a week. By doing that, you reduce the amount of dead tissue, non-viable tissue, the bacterial count. In fact, you'd think, oh, we're fooling with wounds. We rarely ever see a wound infection once we get them clean and healthy. So that's what we do. And we use a lot of disciplinary, disciplines of, of uh, medicine. That means we work closely with podiatrists, which check the feet, cardiovascular doctors that work on circulation in the legs, surgeons, because some of these wounds are too big to be debrided or cleaned in a, in a clinical setting, just to mention a few. And what type of wounds do we treat? We treat venous ulcers. A venous ulcer is a wound that is caused because the veins just do not return blood properly to the heart. It makes the legs swell. Fluid builds up, poor oxygenation, you get blistering, and then you get these huge painful ulcers. Uh, we have pressure ulcers, and that's any type of ulcer that occurs because of pressure. Laying in a bed too long, uh, not realizing that your leg is up against the bed post of the bed, and that pressure on the skin cuts circulation, the skin dies, you get an ulcer. Diabetic ulcers, those are ulcers that are related to diabetes, and most of these pressure <coughs> ulcers are related to the fact that you lose sensation or feelings in your legs. Arterial ulcers are ulcers that occur because of poor circulation. If you have poor circulation, you don't handle pressure as much. If you have poor circulation and then you can't feel your legs, you develop a wound quicker. If you have poor circulation, you don't heal as good. Uh, vascular insufficiencies, um, we probably aren't going to get into that, but uh, we, have, we work closely with vein doctors. Sometimes we have things like venous reflux, one bad vein that backs pressure up into just one area of the leg and you'll get an ulcer. Uh, maybe you have compression of the, of the femoral veins as they come up the legs causing the whole leg to swell. So those are <coughs> ideas of other types of, of wounds. These are not all the wounds that we have, traumatic wounds. Uh, people fall off of ladders, they get kicked by a horse, uh, 
We have insect bites, brown recluse spider bites, all of those uh, turn into ulcers. There are ulcers caused by radiation therapy, either immediately or delayed. And then the worst thing that can happen to a chronic wound, and that's why we like them to heal, is that the bone underneath gets infected. And the bones are very slow growing creatures. They do not heal quickly. They require four to six weeks of IV antibiotics and it wounds will not heal over an infected bone. Uh, skin irritations, chronic skin problems can result in wounds. Some people have factitial dermatitis where they keep scratching their skin um, and develop wounds that can be quite large or big. Post-surgical wounds, all we see those, the best surgery in the world cannot prevent things called uh, uh, conditions such as hematomas that's bleeding into the wounds, hypergranulation, seromas, which are fluid secreting tissue masses within the wounds. So we see some wounds that are broke down. Sometimes wounds have to be left open because of uh, infections like a, a ruptured abscess. You got to take the, I mean a ruptured appendix. You have to take the appendix out you have to close a deep layer, but you cannot close the skin because you're closing up bacteria in the skin. Those wounds have to heal through what we call secondary intention. They have to heal over time. Um, and then they talk about neuropathic ulcers, and that just means that you can't feel, and what you can't feel, you can get a, a, an ulcer on there. Um, by being prov provider-driven, what it basically means is, is that we work with other doctors who send us patients and we send them back out. <laughs> if you're a diabetic, we have to make sure that your primary care doctor is controlling your diabetes. Sugars that are elevated is proven that you do not heal as well. Um, if you have arterial problems, we work with cardiologists and vascular surgeons to try to improve circulation on the legs. If we see you have a lot of calluses, we work with the podiatrist to get the patients in so that we work on those feet and try to prevent the ulcers from occurring, just to name a few. So it's a, it's a very uh, multidisciplinary uh, service. Now we have, I like to say advanced wound care, and then we have it they call it advanced treatments, sometimes we call it advanced modalities. If a wound has been treated medically and you've addressed other issues that could cause these wounds to occur, then you have a chronic wound that's not improving after three to four weeks. That means that we have a problem. We use things called advanced modalities, which are either products equipment, appliances or devices that help facilitate wound healing. Uh, Y'all might have heard of hyperbaric oxygen. That's where you put somebody in a chamber under 100% oxygen, under increased atmospheric pressure, surgical debridement and removal of non-viable tissue. We've talked about that earlier and how it helps. Negative pressure, Wound therapy, NPWT, wound vac, y'all have heard of that. And it's basically, you hook a device that uh, provides suction, that negative suction stimulates with a foam, certain type of foam in the wound. It stimulates granulation, which is tissue that will grow and fill the wound in. It also provides wound moisture. It doesn't keep the wound too dry or too wet. And that's the thing too about wounds. Generally, if you have a wound, don't soak it. It doesn't like to be wet, and the other thing is, leave it unbandaged. Hey, it doesn't like to be dry. It likes to be moist. Uh, we use wraps to try to get edema down, because if you don't get the swelling down on the leg, we talked about venous ulcers, where the veins are not returning blood and you get a buildup of fluid. Until you get the edema down, that's, a, that's the cause. You're not going to get that wound to heal. And then there's a lot of skin substitutes and growth factors. Uh, some of these are made from, they're made from pig, from, uh, or from beef, uh, bovine porcine products. They'll take the uh, 
and some of them are actually made from the tendons of uh, animals. And they take that collagen and basically grind it up. It's cleaned, it's sterilized, but collagen provides kind of like a network in the wound for cells to stick on to promote growth and wound healing. Some of these are living tissues, like a thera skin, which is actually donated skin, the top layer, which also gives a network, but actually has live cells that help facilitate healing. There are two types of substitutes. One is an allograft that's made from human products, and a xenograft is made from like pig and beef products. And those do work. But again, you have to have a clean wound, a wound that has been properly debrided and has failed to heal after three to four weeks. Sometimes the body walls that wound off, it just doesn't see it or it doesn't start it to heal and you need something to jump start it. Uh, this is a hyperbaric oxygen. We talked about the 100% oxygen, increased uh, atmospheric pressure. It facilitates wound healing. It does have a bacterial sidal effect, meaning it does kill certain bacteria. It's used in acute necrotizing infection, um, and it's used in bone infections, but it has certain limitations, which means you have to meet certain criteria to get it. So it's not for everybody. There's a lot of people we know it would work on, but they don't fit the criteria. I think the criteria is too strict now. It used to be not strict enough. Uh, the, the wound vac, we talked about it. That's the little machine. You can carry it around with you. It provides suction. That's the tube and the suction device. And then the foam goes in the wound. And you can, and it does work. If you take, you say, well, I'm going to put any foam in there. Or I'm going to put a, uh, I'll just put suction on it. And I'll put a piece of gauze in there. Doesn't work. It's got to be a certain, certain type of foam. There's got to be a certain space between the foam because we looked at MR, on MRIs, micron, uh, elect, microsco uh, electron microscopes, and those do not promote granulation. But you see in between the little struts on the foam, granulation. So it has to do with the negative pressure and the stretch between those little struts of that foam that stimulates the growth of that tissue. So there is a science to it. Uh, and these things aren't that simple. Within this tube are little tubes so that it can monitor the pressure at the base of the wound so that the pressure on this machine equals to the pressure at the bottom of the wound. So it's not as simple as hooking the auric vacuum cleaner onto a tube and letting it suck, you know. Um, there are a lot of other, we talked about uh, tissues. Uh, I didn't mention Regranex, and it's some growth factors that you can put on a wound to help stimulate it. Again, you have to get approval. Applograft is an allograft. It's grown human skin on a collagen base that helps facilitate wound growth. Integra is equine, I believe equine, uh, Achilles tendon or horse tendon that's been ground up. Alloderm is cadaver bone and collagen that's used in a, that's, all these have been sterilized and there's good control on them, but it provides a collagen and network for wounds to heal. Promogran is a collagen-based product Oasis is an, a xenograft that's made from pig or porcine intestines. And it's a, it looks like a onion skin. When you look at it, it's like the, what do they call it, the onion skin typing paper, kind of crispy paper. And then uh, Prisma, which is a um, kind of a collagen with silver alginate. I mean, uh, ionized silver, which works as an antibacterial agent. So all these are products that we use, and there's a whole lot of them that's out there. But um, <clears throat> what collagen does is it works like a trellis if you're trying to grow a vine. And when you clean a wound and you put that in there, when you bleed, you release platelets. Platelets stick to collagen. 
When collagen is exposed, platelets stick to it, rupture, and start clotting process. Platelets are what? Full of growth factors. So by cleaning the wound each time, you stimulate that healing process. By adding the collagen to it, you further add a, a lattice or a trellis, if I can use that, for the cells to grow on and around. And you say, well, what happens to all this stuff? And the granulation tissue the body forms. Once it starts growing, the body and the skin totally keeps organizing. So once a wound is healed, the body is going to reorganize that back into normal looking skin over time. And all these products are broken down and completely absorbed over time. They just don't stick around and stay there forever. Uh, what is healthy skin? It depends on who you are. Okay? Uh, oh, yeah. That's cute. But wait till they get, you know, I've seen a big one, they're not too nice. <laughs> All right. So what's important with skin, especially diabetics, people with neuropathy, but anybody should do this. Uh, check your feet. If you can't look under them, use a mirror. If you can't check the feet yourself, get somebody else to do it. Wash your feet. Wash between the toes daily. Dry real good between those areas. Make sure there's no buildup of skin. If you see a sore or something, that should be taken care of immediately. If you can, get shoes from a place that has a person that's, that understands <coughs> how to fit shoes and fit you properly. Um, they say check, get your shoes done at the end of the day because your feet does swell a little bit over time. And if you have neuropathy or poor feelings in your feet or a history of sores, then you should always check your feet, not only before you put the shoes and socks on, but after you take them off. Uh, use a soft type of shoe. You don't want to get stiff shoes. You don't want to get high heels. Uh, you don't want to get pointed shoes. And if they're new, don't wear them. I wouldn't even wear them an hour when I first get them. I just wear them around the house for 15, 20 minutes to show a couple times, see how they work. Because it only takes a little while for a new shoe to rub a blister on you. Uh, and what about <laughs> sandals and open-toed shoes? If you can't feel your feet, you can't tell if a rock gets under there. You can't tell if you bump your feet. That whole shoe provides protection. Um, Really, you shouldn't do it. Now, I know some people have glucose intolerance. They can feel anything. That's a little different. But if you're already to the point where you have calluses, you can't feel good, really, that's a no-no. And always wear some type of socks or protective gear because there could be some rough surfaces in those shoes that could rub a blister. And these things, uh, if you're going to always wear a shoe, some people require so stockings or hoses for compression. Try to avoid the synthetic material. Use cotton. Um, and this is a little common sense area. Don't, hey, don't walk on hot pavement. And we have seen horrible, horrible wounds. We, I had a guy that they wanted to cut his leg off about a year and a half ago. He'd gone out to the uh, uh, water world out there at uh, San Antonio and had a huge infection and they were going to cut his foot off. He didn't want to do it. Asked if we could be consulted. We saw him. Uh, he had to have HBO antibiotics, uh, six weeks of antibiotics. His foot healed, but he almost lost it. And he was 55 and 55, 52, I'm sorry, <coughs> 52 years old, still working. Uh, that would have been a hardship on him and his family had that happened. But we got lucky. Well, he did. Uh, you know, and, and a lot of people with wounds that can't feel them or have diabetic neuropathy, they keep walking, well, I've got to keep working, I've got to keep doing this. If they could feel the wound, trust me, they wouldn't be walking on it. That's why it's there. And that's one of the hardest things we, we try to achieve is to get them to offload that foot. Uh, if you can't feel anything in your feet, you can't tell the temperature of the water, You've got to fill it with your hands, and if your hands have neuropathy, you need a thermometer, you know. And try to avoid cutting corners or calluses yourselves. Uh, if you can't see it, you might cut a little too deep. Even if you go to the best doctors, they may nick and get a little bleed or something, but if you don't take care of that callus, it gets thicker, it gets bigger. It's like having a rock in your shoe. It'll eventually 
create a pressure point and create an ulcer. And uh, if you have these problems, that's where we recommend getting a podiatrist involved to cut the toenails. And if there's ever a problem with them, then you have somebody you can contact directly. And this is probably the most important part of the whole thing. Can you feel or can't you feel on your feet? Does it have sensation? Once you lose sensation, that's probably the biggest risk factor for wounds on the feet. Uh, what does it mean to lose tactile sensation? That means you can't feel things on the surface of the skin. That means you walk on a sore. That means you go around with a tack stuck in your foot for a week until you start smelling something or you're running a fever and then you find out, hey, I got a big infection on my foot. And that happens more often than you think. Uh, you can hurt your foot, stub a toe, lose a nail, or you look at it and the toenail's hanging and you go, what happened to my foot? That happens all the time with diabetics and patients with neuropathy. Uh, So the bottom line is, keep your diabetes under control. If you have any kind of back problems, pinched nerves, prolonged diabetes, check it. Certain chemotherapy agents can cause nerve damage. There's a lot of people with idiopathic peripheral neuropathy. That means as you get older, your nerve endings just don't work like it used to. And that does have, is very frequent. There's nothing you can do for it, but you lose sensation. That sensation is a huge risk factor. And if you get and if you're healthy and you got a sore on your foot, treat it for a couple weeks or two or three. If it's not healing, see your doctor. If the person next to you, if you get a wound on your foot and you're diabetic, call your doctor. Go get go let them take a look at it. It's a relative risk, okay? And bottom line is any wound that has, in general, without any other risk factors, that hadn't healed in three to four weeks is a chronic wound and needs to be checked out. And the thing is, when in doubt, check it out. Yes, sir? The only kind of ulcers I've heard about when I was younger were stomach ulcers. I don't even know what an ulcer is, actually. Okay, good, idea. good question. That, you know, and that, that's funny because uh, we just take it second hand, but an ulcer really is basically, we m intend it more to be a chronic wound, okay? Um, sometimes we call certain things wound, like a surgical wound, traumatic wound. Ulcers are kind of like a wound that has developed because of loss of neuropathy, but it's a very fine line. Just think of it as a hole in the skin just like a wound. That's what an ulcer is. And it usually implies chronicity or cro is chronic. And an ulcer in the stomach is also an open wound that's been there for a while, but that's totally different from this. That's related to either uh, well, some... Treat that with antibiotics. If, it's, if it happens to be H. pylori gastritis. If it's not, then you have to worry about it being cancer, or there's other reasons to get ulcers besides those Especially two. Especially if it's a wound that doesn't heal. Exactly.